Let's go over the rehabilitation guidelines for a pulley sprain. Now, based on the research by Luter and colleagues, pulleys are graded based on ultrasound evidence by grade 1, 2, 3, 4A, and 4B. As you can see by this table here, in this research review, they further identified the rehabilitation guidelines based on each grade. There's whether the pulley sprain is appropriate for therapy or surgery. There's recommendations about immobilization. There are best practice recommendations about using a pulley protection splint or taping. There are return to sport guidelines for easy and full return to sport. And there's guidelines of how to use tape while climbing. So these rehabilitation timelines and categories were based on the grading of pulley sprains. So this is grading with ultrasound imaging. You can also use CT scan or MRI. But what if you don't have access to ultrasound imaging? What if you can't grade a pulley sprain from 1 to 4B? Then you can use a clinical criteria developed by Cooper and colleagues. And you can see the characteristics of this clinical criteria are mild, moderate, and severe. The influence of pain on daily living and function, active range of motion, manual muscle testing, as well as pain with palpation make up the clinical criteria to grade the severity of a pulley injury. So if you're trying to establish a rehabilitation program for a climbing injury that has a pulley sprain, and you're trying to classify based on a category, if you have access to diagnostic imaging, use that. That's your gold standard. However, if you don't have access to that, then you can use this clinical criteria. And you can see that both the gold standard, the ultrasound imaging, and the clinical criteria are color aligned. In green, we have grade one, as well as mild. In yellow, we have grade two, as well as moderate. In red, grade three, as well as severe. And then in blue, we have grade four, and not applicable because you won't be seeing them clinically. Now, there is no correlation in research to the degree in ultrasound of bone tendon distance and the clinical findings, this mild, moderate, and severe. So if you aren't using ultrasound to determine the grade of injury, use the clinical criteria. But if you do have ultrasound findings, use that as your gold standard to determine rehabilitation protocols. If the grade of injury and the classification clinically differ significantly, use your clinical judgment when identifying which category to rehabilitate the climber in. Now, based on ultrasound imaging and the clinical classification, you can then determine the category. You could determine whether it's in this green category, this yellow category, this red category, or this blue category, which is non-conservative. So if you look at the column highlighted in green, you could see a clinical criteria of a mild pulley sprain or a grade one pulley sprain has the timelines associated with returning to hangboarding as well as returning to climbing. The same in the middle, you can see the yellow column for moderate or grade two. And then the far right, the severe column or grade three. On the far left, you can see the criteria for climbers to return to no pain hangs stage one, easy climbing, no pain hangs stage two, moderate climbing, low pain hangs stage one, hard climbing, and low pain hangs stage two. In just a little bit, I'll get into the criteria of what a low pain and a no pain hang is and how you can grade and stage a climber through this rehabilitation progression of progressively loading their fingers. But to operationally define easy, moderate, and hard climbing, we could say that easy climbing is avoiding half and full crimp grips, using larger holds on faces that aren't angled beyond vertical, two full grades below your on-site ability, so if you climb 512, you'd be climbing 510. If you climb V8, you'd be climbing V6. Moderate climbing is beginning to use half crimp grips on routes with a mild angle beyond vertical. One full grade below on-site ability. So if a climber climbs 512, they'd be climbing 511. If they climb V8, they'd be climbing V7. And hard climbing, using crimps on routes with an angle beyond vertical, climbing up to your on-site level. If a climber climbs 512, they'd be climbing 512. If they climb V8, they'd be climbing V8. So now that we understand the research on the grading of injuries using ultrasound, and we also understand the research on the clinical categories, we now can start looking at how to rehabilitate a climber. We know the rehabilitation categories, the timelines, when climbers can return to hanging, 
as well as climbing. So now we have to look to see how they can progress through a rehabilitation pyramid. So we would start with unloading the tissues, we would move on to mobility, we would further go into strength and muscle performance, and then we would retrain movement. This is the formula to return a climber back to sport after a pulley injury. So if we look at the base level of the pyramid, unloading, there are four different ways to unload. I'm gonna go over the first three right now, and on the next slide, we'll go over the fourth. Now the first three ways are using tape to improve bone tendon distance. You can see on the far left, circumferential taping. In the middle, figure eight taping. And on the far right, H taping. These three different techniques provide different levels of support to the pulley. For the circumferential technique, Wrapping the tape closer to the distal end of the proximal phalanx can help decrease the bowstringing effect of a ruptured pulley by reducing the angle of the flexor tendon acting upon the pulley. For the figure eight taping technique, it's often used to improve bone tendon distance, but it also substantially decreases PIP joint flexion angle while climbing. And the H tape, it's more supportive to the pulley than the figure eight and the circumferential taping methods and it reduces tendon bone distance by 16% and increases the strength in the crimp grip by 13%. So these three taping techniques have the potential to reduce bone tendon distance. Now, whether it's while climbers performing exercises or when they're actually climbing. Now, the least supportive technique is the circumferential. The middle range supportive technique is the figure eight. And the most supportive technique is the H taping. The H-taping technique improves bone tendon distance, primarily acting at the level of A3 to approximate the area of maximal bow stringing. In effect, this then unloads A2 as well as A4. So these are the tape jobs that are recommended to improve bone tendon distance in a climber that has a pulley sprain. But a more aggressive way a way to improve bone tendon distance even further is a pulley protection splint. Now a pulley protection splint is a thermoplastic ring that wraps around the finger that is custom fit to adhere or to press the tendon closer to the bone. As you can see here, there's an image of a fabricated pulley protection splint. Wearing a pulley protection splint during exercises and throughout the day is highly effective for a climber who is returning back to climbing after a pulley sprain. The benefit of a pulley protection splint has been supported in research. In a study by Schneeberger and colleagues, they looked at 47 complete pulley ruptures in 45 different rock climbers. They used a pulley protection splint treatment and they looked at the bone tendon distance. And the bone tendon distance improved from 4.4 millimeters to 2.3 millimeters after an A2 pulley rupture and also from 2.9 millimeters to 2.1 millimeters after an A4 pulley rupture. And they had these climbers wear the pulley protection splints on their fingers for eight weeks after injury. 88% of climbers regain their previous climbing level after just wearing this pulley protection splint and going through the parameters of this study. So improving bone tendon distance and allowing that pulley to fully heal is a very important part of the rehabilitation process for a pulley sprain. So as you go up the pyramid, we have this unloading techniques. We have four different categories. We have the level one, two, three, and four, circumferential, figure eight, H taping, as well as pulley protection splints. And now we're moving on to the next level of the pyramid, the mobility category. Now there's several different ways to improve the mobility of a finger after a pulley sprain. One, is you wanna make sure you get adequate circulation to the finger. There are so many ways to do this and we're gonna go over several different ways. Number two, you wanna make sure that you can glide the tendons in the finger. Make sure that the tendons can glide, the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus, underneath the pulleys to lubricate those surfaces and improve healing. And third, if there are any mobility deficits in the fingers, you wanna make sure that you maintain the range of motion of the fingers. You can see here the three different categories, improving circulation, gliding the tendon, and restoring mobility. So after a climber unloads their tissues by using taping or splinting, and they improve mobility, you then want them to slowly increase muscle performance. 
but to do so without irritating the pulley. So in order to do this, they can go through progressive loading. If you look at this slide here, you can see on the far left, we have two categories, no pain and low pain. And you can see on the far right, we have several different methods. Let's start with the methods. You can see on the far right, we have the different methods of pulling as well as hanging. These are two ways to load the fingers for rock climbing and to load the fingers to rehabilitate a pulley injury. So let's start with pulls. We have isometric gripping with the isotonic pull. So I want you to imagine this as taking a portable hangboard, having it connected to a thick resistance band, isometrically gripping on the portable hangboard, and then isotonically flexing and extending the elbow to perform a row. This would be an isometric grip with an isotonic pull. Now you can have an isotonic grip with an isometric pull. So an isotonic grip would involve flexing and extending the fingers. An isometric pull would mean fixing the elbow angle. So you can have that same setup, but you can row the portable hangboard into your body, and then you could slowly open and close the fingers, going into a full or half crimp, and then going into an open hand position. In our final category, an isometric grip with an isometric pull. This would be, for example, standing underneath a hangboard, pulling with your full amount of force, but not coming off the ground isometrically pulling with your elbow flexing, isometrically engaging the finger flexors, but not having any type of movement. So these are the different types of pulls. What about the different types of hangs? Well, you can hang with double arm, single arm, weight added, as well as weight removed. And you have all of these different parameters and methods to load a climber after a pulley injury. And you can mix and match all of these to find the best fit for the climber clinically. So once you've identified the best fit, and typically the best fit clinically is the method that produces the least amount of pain or the method that has the least amount of tendon bowstringing. And once you've identified that, we then have to look at how to load a climber with different types of hangs or different types of pulls. So if we look on this far left column, we could see we have a no pain category and a low pain category. Whether performing pulls or hangs, the no pain category is an exercise that generates zero out of 10 pain. And a low pain exercise is an exercise that generates three out of 10 pain that lasts no more than three minutes. And underneath each description, you can see an example of a stage one and a stage two protocol utilizing a no pain or a low pain category. Now the whole purpose of a low pain or no pain category is progressive loading. There's no rhyme or reason for sets and reps. There's been no clinical research that supports one protocol over the other in the rehabilitation of a pulley sprain. But if you can slowly progressively load a climber, then you have the best opportunity to returning them to climbing function with little pain, as well as with full function climbing. So if you think about it, for a low pain hang versus a no pain hang, the only difference is the pain generation. And you wanna use no pain first and stage one before stage two, and you can see that clearly outlined in the chart. So you can progress a climber through a rehabilitation model. So you can see here stage one is a seven seconds on, three seconds off repeater with three sets, seven reps, three minute rest between sets, and three times a week, using only the open hand grip. That stage one is progressed to a stage two with the same parameters, but now adding in the half crimp grip. You can further see with the low pain criteria that we have stage one, which is one set of four reps, seven seconds on, three seconds off, three minutes rest between sets, two times per week, and you use different holds, an open hand, a half crimp, and a three finger pocket. This then progresses with the same parameters into stage two, but now adding a two finger pocket. As I mentioned before, as long as the climber is progressively loading their ligaments and tendons, they're on the right track. They just need to follow the outline criteria and guidelines, sticking to no pain generating exercises, and then moving through two different stages, and then into low pain generating exercises during this remodeling maturation phase and going through two different stages. And this progressive loading, which is variable, the types of grips, the sets and reps per climber, but the progressive loading is the key and utilizing different parameters, using these different methods outlined on the slide, 
can allow climbers to get to their goals a lot sooner. When a climber is going through the rehabilitation for a pulley injury, you'll want to make sure as they perform range of motion, strength, and gripping that they protect the pulley. Now this is based on the grade or the clinical classification. You can see here using an unloading technique, in this case the H-tape, during a crimp position, and this can also be during active range of motion exercises, strength training, as well as climbing, that the tendon approximates close to the bone, thus giving the pulley the ability to heal. So a clinician will need to use their judgment to determine when and how much to apply taping techniques as well as a pulley protection splint during functional rehabilitative exercise. 